Yeah, 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 yeah. That me I say, no, just cool. On if you call, just cool radio. Zoom, zam. At the real radio. Boom. Yeah. Anton, too bad. I saw the thing set in a just cool radio. On time, every time. Never leave the time. Fury line. Boom, bam. Thing about it, hence why we kind of complete this thing here to show a different look. Because sometimes when you see these things on TV, right, you can't associate yourself with the people on there because you know they've never been through anything. You know, man like we, Naptali, a whole gangster. A man like me, they on the road long time and, you know, if you, if you Google we, we, we're then at the battle of Brixton, we fight for Brixton. We fight when riot are going from Kola of a lane and we riot in a Brixton. So we know that we know it. So we understand the whole thing. Well, it's good that you're back. Thank you. Gentlemen, I have a question. question just yeah. Um, Solomon. I taught Solomon cricket at school. Solomon was a beautiful youth. He's one of the best little cricketers I taught over a long period. I even got as far as planting a tree at Kennington Park. In memory of Salawan. Nice. Respect. Nice. <laughs> and I've got to look on the tree, the boss. Yeah, well, June and June as well. June, we went and plant the tree. June was there as well. Okay. And Amber. Yeah. Anyway, with that in mind, what you have to tell the youths then, the British born youths then, the black British born youths then, when you die yard, what you have to tell them? What you have to tell them? Sir? May I tell them, sir, listen, stand up for your right. Don't feel like you're a loser. Don't feel like you can't be successful. Do not ever tell yourself that you can't. Just tell yourself that you can. If you see something and you want it, you don't have to go and take it. You can't work for it, you know. Because enough people have things and they work for it. But you're always going to have something going to do what they're going to do, yeah? But you have, to, you have to stand up and know we have to respect one another. We have to respect what we're doing, we have to respect life. Because I don't think some of the youth them understand, you know. When them stab a man, I don't think them really stab him for kill him, you know. But you see, when you stab a man and kill him, I remember once in jail, you know, a youth go to court and him come back and him get 22 years, you know. I'm mean, not talking 22 years and him do 11, you know. Him get 22 years and him. I laugh and I smile and I say, I may get 22. I mean, I say, what? You can get 22 years and happy. That means to say, you, where, where, the threshold we have is so low that 22 years in prison is, is a good thing. No. Mm -mm. So the youth, them parents, show your youth them love. We might lose two generations, you know. I personally believe there's two generations gone. You know, and when you get to a certain age, you can't bring it back. So we need to catch them now. The young ones, teach them, teach them love, teach them unity, teach them family, teach them the value of life, teach them their own value, make them personally value themselves so they can value other people. So my message is love. Good evening, Rastaman. Bless it. Brother Black, I give thanks and praise to the Almighty for creating you. And thank him very much. And thank you for your help, because you helped me. No matter about that, but really what you have to say to everybody in totality as human, because you are elder. You know? To benefit everybody, spiritually, one child. Yes, yeah, spiritually is a same message, love, you know. <clears throat> you know, you have peace, love, unity, you know, is strength, you know. That's what we have as strength, you know. If, if, if we join together, nobody can break that chain there, you know. Because we got through everything, you know. We got through slavery and them things. Now, with our parents, our ancestors, mother used to do like five jobs. You think you can't get anybody to do five jobs now? Them just go and sign on a social security and sit on that them yard and watch TV all day. My mother used to do five jobs. Let me tell you, 
I used to go cleaning with my mother at 2 o'clock in the morning, just over London Bridge in the bank. My mother used to clean the banks at night. And I used to go, I was going to school, you know, and I used to go bank with my mother. I used to stitch lining, inside lining for coats and jackets for my mother. That was another job she did. But me and my sister, them, we used to stitch the lining, them. We can't sew. And sew a lining, and we do all 1,000 inside lining every week to help mommy. Because mommy I worked so hard, she had a five job. So I just love star and, and respect for each other. And, and the greatest thing that we can't give anybody love. Because we don't have the money, you know, but we have the love. And you can't buy love with money. True. Many people in front of they just start talking about this film, think it's going to be about sound systems. Uh, and it's, and it's, it's not. Um, but what was important about sound systems? So the, the tracks you do first, Molly, what, what, what was. I don't think I could speak about sound systems with the great sound men in the room here from my spy and Saxon right, who I happen to know. Can I leap off and just say I wanted to thank, I think it takes massive bravery to take part in a documentary and to expose yourself when you're quite a public figure, when you're vulnerable, when your life's collapsing. And I really salute both of you for letting me do that. Because I know there's a lot of family members here, I won't catch their eye, but I really thank the Martin family for putting up with it and for being so generous and actually for being such a fantastic and supportive and brilliant family. Yeah. Yeah, I second and third that. If you'd like me to talk about sound systems for a very long time, I think I could just now chat on. <laughs> well, not for a very long time, but just, just briefly, because I, I think there's, there's something there's a story around sound systems that, that, we, that, that um, that's getting lost. Um, that, that There's no acknowledgement for that generation and the brilliance and the creativity and it being the absolute bedrock of what youth culture, popular culture, they should be millionaires. And it's very strange that there's a generation of specifically West Indian people who have created what has now become a very lucrative business. And thanks to the internet, and it's no longer in the hands of big companies, Stormzy and people, I presume, are cruising around in Range Rovers. But that's not true of two generations back. And so I think there's a lot to be learned, and I think we should be humble generally in this country about our lack of acknowledgement and the lack of tying up what has been and where we are. Because there's a big gulf, there's a big hole, and it seems that nobody really is allowed to know about their history. It's not part of going to school to learn about where you come from. So you maybe have a lost generation. And it, and it, it feels like the sound systems acted as a, as, a, uh, as a network for you, as a way of, of connecting with, with, with each other and, and, and others. And, uh, Natalie, it's important in your life, right? Clearly. Yeah, the sound system played a big part in my life. That's, um, that's why I started when I was around 13, 14. You know, with Jewel Creed Sound. Um, after that too, we decided to go home, and then it was just natural that I gravitated towards Cox and Salt, where um, there was Lydie and Festus, and Steve wasn't there at that time, we never reached it, you know them? But when they came along, I decided, well, might as well make them come as youth, man, and make them try. I wasn't gifted to play song. I wasn't gifted to, yeah, to do them thing. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I just used to collect the sound money and make sure everybody get their money and everybody's all right and nobody you know, push down the door and all them kind of stuff. That was my remit where the sound was concerned. But them money are gifted to play music and all these kind of things. And it did play a big part in our life because that was the springboard where, you know, we did many things from there. We tour all over Europe with the sound and we get enough, enough good reviews from it. But it's like everybody just drifted away and did their own thing. And the gel that was holding us together was our big boss, Lyle Coxon, but I don't know if he dropped the button or whatever it is, but that's what we needed to keep us going because our, our sound could really be something ginormous and really set the pace for not of things in the, in, in the UK, but for some reason or another, it didn't work out that way. And we all went wayward. Some of us went wayward, some went down to do great things. So back to the audience. So there's a, sorry, the, uh, the lady oh, there. Oh, um, oh, oh, we've got the microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So ask a question and then maybe ask a question straight after. Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello. Oh well, it's really deep. Excuse me. <laughs> I was I had something to say and then you kind of threw me off point. So I wanted to say, as 30 years ago, a white boy who got introduced to beer parties, sound system. I was so accepted. I never had a drama. And that was beautiful. But onto the film, respect to you all, it was so beautiful. I never cry. I haven't cried and laughed so much over something for a long time. Yeah. So that's really great. I bless that. Yeah, thanks. I've got so many questions, but just I'll keep it very brief. Just the one main one because you mentioned touched on the mixed race, the half caste thing. I've got family. Yeah. And on the other side of the scale, even like you say for over-representation, and I apologize so much for what my ancestors have done and what's been going on. Yeah. But where do we go forward? I'm not, I have to watch the film again, maybe you had that message, but where do we go forward within this racist, corrupt madness? I think I will answer that. No what? yeah, seriously. The, the black children that born here and the grandchildren that born here, they ain't going anywhere. Regardless of what people say, what gold, home, and they, they ain't going nowhere. This is their home, yeah? So they need to just understand that, make a life here if you can, yeah? And the elders, they need to let them know, so well, get them education. That's what they need. Get them education and impact. If they want to do something else in the meantime, fine. But make sure so you have your education, yeah? Otherwise, you're going to be an old man like me and do foolishness before you realize that it's too late to do anything else. But so sorry, Natalia, look at the difference with what happened with, with your son. What the system over here is not catering. Yeah, well then we need people with power. We need the power. And we're talking to power. And we're letting them understand that they should give a listening ear to what we have to say. Because, you know, we have a lot to say and a lot to offer. You know, there's, pe we, we, there's people that we've met along our journey and we're talking to them. Let's hope they can walk the walk, yeah? But that's what we are trying to do right now. I'm going to take another one. Uh, I don't know, I'm confused. I'm I just like to say really thank you and blessings for making that film. And I noticed that on the questionnaire that you've given, it asks, well, who do we think should see this film? I myself work in the education system. I work with 14 to 16 year olds who've been excluded from school. And I'm working with them three days a week in an environment that what I call sinful, because we have children being thrown out of school just like how they tried to label your son. And they are now, because of money, being put into adult college environments because the school does not want them. The schools are now, it's, education is about money now and about bums on seats. And basically, schools do not want children in school who are gonna bring their grades down. And I'm working with these children, I'm, I'm, taping this now because I was with my 12 boys today talking about education and I was saying that they need to go home. I'm myself I'm from Barbados but we need more programs where our children who are born here can go home and see how education is valued and how you make a role for yourself in life and you don't kind of diseducation because that's what our children are doing unfortunately and they're being allowed to do this by a system which is not truthful to them so yeah well, can, can i just ask if you don't run away at the end because actually there's such a sort of strong response in that direction we'd really love to have your I'm, particulars I'm, in case with this I'm it is well in case it's a conversation that can build i think rob has plans yeah, and yeah, let me say, education is the key. Cause with my son, they thought he was he had ADHD. They thought he was artistic. They said he had behavioral problems. They said he couldn't be in a mainstream school. And you know, 
me share something with you people, yeah? Can you imagine, just, just for a moment, as a parent, going to your son's school, and when you look, you don't see your son. And you know you can't go to school and leave him with these people. And you don't see him when you go to school. Call him, say, your son, this, your son, that, your son, the other. So they try all kind of things. So me and the mother decide, say, look, no, I have enough youth go to England, and I want to give him a chance. I've always heard about the education system in Jamaica and in the Caribbean. So we thought, give him an opportunity to come and try one of them. And the mother was up feet. So we moved them to Jamaica. And his first at prep school, his, his marks was 92. Because when he went into the school, like he said, you hear him say, they thought I was bad. They thought I was nothing good. But when I came to Jamaica, I realized that they were wrong. Him say, nobody never prompt him, you know. I there prison when he must say that. So I, I, when I come out, I hear him say them things there. And him say, when he go to Jamaica, he realized that they were wrong. And he realized that he could do something with himself. And it's 92.2. He took his entrance exam. And he's actually in the top school in Jamaica, Woolmers. 95% was his average mark. So, them need to give the youth them a chance, educate the youth them, don't mash up the youth them life. Because when you start from then, you know, that youth start believe that there's nothing else. And him start do two little thing out on the road. I know, I'm a youth will leave school too early. So I know, I used to sleep in a Brockwell Park as a youth, sleep in a Brockwell Park in the hut, cause I running from home and didn't have nothing to do. Uh, so I know what it's like to be on the street and I'm nothing new. It's been happening for a long time, but now they might use some, you know, Babylon let take off the chain and they might use them brain. So them not go physically come do nothing to you and hurt you, but they will use their economic power and oh, this person is a junkie. Imagine you have a social worker at home, a beer, cocaine, heroin, and these things, they must smoke. And then tomorrow morning, they can make decisions on your youth, you know, your life. They can mash up your family, take away your youth from you, and you can't do nothing because I saw the system in England state. Yeah. When them say, where well, take your youth, remember, you don't think on appearance. All right, make them decide to take one of your children them, and you try to stop them. Them carry the whole system, police, soldier, everybody come take away your youth and you can't do nothing. So we've got time for two quick comments. There's one with my phone. Uh, and, and Hi. Hi, Hi. Uh, good evening to Natalie and, and Blacker and Molly. This question is for Molly. Um, you worked hard to get this film commissioned. Is there a part two? Because I feel I need to see more yeah. of the what's going on. It wasn't commissioned. Well, what I do is I shoot the film and then I take it to them. Because then, and even then, they can say no. But then when they say yes, you have the power of a really big corporation behind you. And then whatever story you're telling becomes mainstream. And I like to fight from the inside. So I think that if you bring something within and you package it in such a way they make accessible. It's quite funny if you look at the trailer that's been done, it's super accessible. It doesn't reflect the content, there's no trouble, and there's lots of white people being hugged, but it's something that they're doing. <laughs> to, and I, I appreciate it because it's a tricky journey. That's why this whole screening is happening for free, because they recognise we do live in quite a divided society. And I think we should be honest about it and stop pretending it's all a big love bubble because it's not going well. True. Yeah, I would real, love Molly. To Have you put the camera down, Molly? Sorry? Have you put the camera down? I'd never put it down. I'd like to do the rest of Blacker's family. Well, that, that would be lovely. <laughs> when she doesn't have the camera, she has her phone. <laughs> I felt that Tali driving round on this tour. I think we should project that as a big movie. <laughs> No hands on the wheel, 110. I'm playing bongo drums, ain't it? Come in the middle here. Just wanted to say hello to Blacker and Molly. Thank you. 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 Thank
hello to Black Oak Road because I haven't seen him for a number of years and I spent quite a bit of time working with, with Black Oak and Coxon and Saxon and Fat Man and various other people to document sound systems in the 80s and so to, firstly it's a hello and it's also to say to me the music felt like it pulled people together it cut across so many things and it was also, also that many of the sound systems operated almost like families so has Black Air got anything to say about that aspect of it especially in relationship to the, the shop which was also a very community orientated thing yeah, the sound, you see, when, when I was growing, we had a few things that could keep us together, yeah? We had family, number one. We had sound system, and we have the church, and we have Rastafari, yeah? Nowadays, people don't make them children go to church no more because they can't be bothered to wake up Sunday morning and send them. But as a Rasta, me send my youth them go to church, you know why? Because I grew up in the church. My mother used to make me go to church. Every, I mean, what the church thing. But it gives you that discipline. It gives you a discipline. Because when you go to Sunday school, you can't ramp. You have to behave yourself. And it's not force them using respect. Yeah? So we go to Sunday school. But when we grow up now, and me buck up some Rasta now, and the discipline where the Rasta them have, and the lifestyle and these things, the man here tell about love and unity and listen to reggae music, you can tell 99% of it is love. Yes, you have an X1% where I talk all kind of foolishness, but we're not going to make that part the cloud with judgment, yeah? And so the sound system, our sound, we didn't play certain type of music. We never played it. So we're not talking about no girl foot or no girl ear or this. We talk about the, the situation, the things that happening on the day. So the sound used to bring people and hug them up and teach them. And when you leave and you hear about love, 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 you, you go and say, yo, you know, say me love you. And you tell your bridge and say, you know, say me love you. How much time when you tell, listen, we could stop this now. Everybody does look upon the person next to them and tell them, say me love you. <laughs> See, some people not even want to do it. Yeah. Car. Car, car, you know why? <laughs> you know why the people have turned the thing pan we? Them turn it rubbish, yeah? If you tell a man say you love him, now you're supposed to be gay. Okay. No, me love all of my bridges, me love everybody. Cause so the thing go. You understand? So we have to deal with the thing on the right level. Hello? Oh, I just wanted to hear from one of the, one of the other stars of the film. Can I say something? Sorry, someone's passed me a mic. I'm going to be a big mouth here. Uh, okay, can we just hear from, from, uh, from you first? Because we are really okay. right. yeah. Give thanks. First of all, I want to give thanks to Molly and to my beloved brethren, Black Adred. Because Black Adred at Molly's film has actually touched on some really important things that is relevant to all of I and I. Children who came from Jamaica as children to meet our parents for the first time, children from other Caribbean islands to meet their parents for the first time. This is a big thing, but for us, if we were just left to get on with it and just to get in. When we went to school, we faced racism. Every walk we walk, we faced racism. And again, people tend to push these things aside and just get on. Knowing Blacker all these years, there's one thing that I've always respected him for, and it's his love of family and the way he deals with youths. The youths don't have to come from his loins for him to treat them as his youth. And I really check for that. Because in these days, the black man is seen as deserting his post, not living up, not being there for his youths. I can say to everyone, Black Andre doesn't mean that kind of father. And I've really watched him over the years and seen how he's flexed with youths and youths and with his sisters and with his mom. And I really, really check for that. So I'm saying give thanks. And I'm saying give thanks for highlighting certain issues, i.e. our children's education in this system and the difference they feel when they go to a country where they don't feel like a minority. 
So hopefully from this movie, there's going to be a lot of dialogue and there's going to be some movements towards doing something about these issues that do play a lot of I and I, especially when you decide to charge Rasta as well. But that's another story. So give thanks. The whole heap of thing has been raised here. And even from we start reasoning about them, then I'm confident that something will happen. So give thanks to the whole of the crew. Yeah, bless you. Yes. Okay, so I just want to come to the sorry, panel. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to come to the panel for a final comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a quick statement. I just want to... So, um, just, I guess, what, what message would you like people to take away uh, from seeing this film? message is, as my brethren say, is love, but also teach the young youth them that please get yourself your education. It's necessary. It's needed. You must have it. If you don't, you will lose out. You will lose out big time. Yeah, as like I did, I lost out big time. Teach the youth them that they must get an education. That's what I, that was my part of this movie. Thank you. I'm not sure about the one message. I thought that my job was to try and take Blacker and Blacker's life and Blacker's world into a broad audience who don't know or care or have never met anyone like Blacker but who just have statistics and facts and think they understand what's going on and they don't and they haven't met you. And I like to try and open a door so that people can feel that they care about somebody. Yeah. And I, I want to say, we, we really need to I know, I know. So, so I just want to say, well done for making the film and being so brave. This is not. I, I, I appreciate Molly and Natalia for putting the film on. What I want to say is that when I've come to your shop, when I was a youth, I always used to get advice by my seven inch singles from you. You may not remember me, but you would always be up for giving me advice about what I'm going through as a, and you don't even really know me, you just know me as a person buying records. Now, what, I know you're going to Jamaica, and in 2021, it's gonna be the 40th anniversary of the uprisings. <laughs> You've been a man that be always trying to bring the community together. I'm trying to put on something in four years time to, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the 81 uprisings. I would like you to come back if you're in Jamaica to help put that festival on. Yeah, I forgot to me I forgot to ask Jaja you know, car ja of the angle, I'm not sure if Jago met me stay till 2021, but if that's the case, I'll be around. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so People give thanks, you know, and when we leave here, so yeah, we're going to Club 414 and Cola Berlin. So I know a lot of questions, a lot of people want to say things and ask things, but something else is going on in here after. So the people have to kind of move up and clean up, and we have to give thanks to rob them for getting it through it so we could have show it to the people. Them. So when we finish, we're going to have a drink at 414 Cola Berlin, which is just two minutes down the road. So. You know, but in, in terms of wow. we want everybody to just leave us up with an open mind, just go out there and make a, make a fight the war. Because you know if you have a gun or a bomb for fight the war, you know. Use the thing up there so your father give you and, and use it to the best of our ability. Cause like you said, I've always been there fighting for the community and make it a point of duty. When I ran Brixton Splash for 10 years, I never took one English new pens from Brixton Splash. We don't take nothing from Brixton Splash. We don't take nothing. We never do anything for the community and ask for money. Because we know, so the village grow the child. The village grow the child. That, that may I tell you now. Make sure when you see a little youth, I remember going in the supermarket, you know and see a little you taking something off of the shelf and say put it down and you know the mother say we are talk to my child for oh if you say that me i try to teach you something good so please make you and i bring this thing together and we're going to bring this message in our house of parliament because mps are going to watch it you know and it then bbc 2 monday night at nine o'clock what you know already yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> tell a friend to tell a yeah, friend. Tell a friend. Yeah. Send it all. So give thanks and praise to everyone. And Jai is the Almighty, yeah? Love and respect. Bless. Thank you. Anna, Anna. Yeah, 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 that me I say, no, just cool. On a for cool, just cool radio. Zoom, zam. At the real radio. Boom. Yeah. Anton, too bad. I saw the thing set in a just cool radio. On time, every time. Never leave the time. Fury line. Boom, bam.